Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. My name is Dr. Paul and I'm glad you're with us today. I'm going to talk to you today about ear infections. I would say as a general pediatrician, when I'm seeing sick children, the top three reasons are my child has a fever, my child has ear pain, or it's cold cough and that whole constellation of just feeling sick, sore throat, the whole bit. But ear infections are right up there on the things that cause a child to be sick that we need to rule out as a pediatrician. The beauty is it's very easily treatable, or in mild cases, you can just watch that child. They'll get better on their own. So let's think about how do we figure out if the child's ear is infected. We have a tool we use right here. This is an otoscope. So with an otoscope, you take a tip. There are different sizes for different size children. And if I'm teaching medical students or new doctors how to hold an otoscope, it's like a pen because with children, they're moving around, they might be bucking, and you don't want to be jamming this otoscope into their ear. So, you're taking a quick look. Turn it on, that always helps. And you can take a look, angle right down the ear canal so that you can see the eardrum. We're gonna walk over to a picture here and I wanna show you what we're actually looking at. So, when you're looking at your child's ear, you know, there was a time when parents were buying little otoscopes and trying to look in themselves. And I don't mind folks doing this, but the tricky part is, so you're looking down this ear canal, and if you'll just imagine if this otoscope is angled slightly off, I'm now looking at the ear canal itself and not the eardrum. So, so when you're looking down the ear canal, you need this to be perfectly aligned and shooting right down the ear canals till you can see that eardrum. This distance right here is probably a little bit less than an inch in most children. And if you're slightly off angle, you're just going to see pink ear canal and you're going to say, oh, my child has an ear infection. What you're really looking for is a gray transparent membrane of a normal eardrum. So if you look at this picture of a normal eardrum, coming down from the top are the little tiny bones of the middle ear and you can see a light reflection and this membrane is paper thin and transparent. So when you see that gray, that light reflex, a shadow of the bones behind the eardrum, you know you're looking at a nice normal eardrum. Now, now what we have from that normal eardrum to a severely infected eardrum is a whole range of appearances of eardrums. Because you're looking at a membrane that oftentimes is bulging with fluid pus filling the space behind it. And there may be so much inflammation that it's angry red, slightly red, a little pink, or normal gray. I'm going to show you a picture of a severely infected eardrum so you get that idea of the contrast of how this may look different. So on this severely infected eardrum you can see angry red here and this white, this actually, this eardrum is bulging so far out that it's blanching out the blood vessels and that's just pure pus and pressure that's filling the middle ear in this particular child. So I'm going to have you look at this normal ear again. We're looking down the ear canal. Here's the, the eardrum. This space here is what's full of pus. So where this infection came from is actually not where some people believe. You'll have grandma say, you've got to wear your hat so you don't get an infection. It's not coming from the outside through the eardrum. The infection actually comes from the back of the throat, back of the nose, up the eustachian tube, and the bacteria actually come up here and because children have little eustachian tubes, they, that bacteria gets trapped. The pus gets too thick, it won't drain out, and hence you've got basically pus under pressure creating that pain sensation and all the distress that you get with an ear infection, which is almost like an abscess. So a couple thoughts about treatment. You've taken your child to the pediatrician. We've diagnosed an ear infection. Remember with ear infections, there can be just fluid no redness, that's called a serosotitis media. That does not need treatment. That fluid will go away in time. It may take a week, it may take months, but that will go away in time as long as it doesn't get reinfected. It's the acute otitis media, the severe, angry, bulging red ear with a kid with high fevers. They're screaming, they're fussy, they can't sleep at night. 
Those are the children probably worth treating with antibiotics. We know that about 80-90% of children will resolve their ear infection without antibiotics, so why not just let everybody get better on their own? Well, in the pre-antibiotic era, back before the 1940s, that's exactly what would happen. And some of these children would have repeated burst eardrums where that tympanic membrane tears, the pus drains out, and eventually it's going to heal on its own. But there's a lot of misery involved with that. So the child who is severely ill, either high fever, severe pain, and has a really harsh, nasty looking ear infection. We usually use antibiotics. Most doctors start with amoxicillin. Uh, there's a lot of resistance to amoxicillin, so if you want to cover the broader spectrum of the possible bacteria that can cause ear infections, we're talking about H. flu, strep pneumo, moraxella, which has actually gone through a number of name changes over the last decade or two. But there are a handful of bacteria that are the primary agents causing most severe bacterial ear infections, acute otitis media. And we can pick antibiotics such as amoxicillin clavulinic acid or ceftonir, broader spectrum that will cover that infection. That having been said, remember always that if you take a lot of antibiotics, you're also killing the good bacteria in your child's gut. I would highly recommend you add probiotics to replace some of these good bacteria and with any antibiotic there's always the risk of allergies so if you get a hives blotchy red rash obviously stop that antibiotic right away give your child medicine for hives this could be diphenhydramine which is Benadryl this could be loratadine which is Claritin call your physician if you're not sure what to do in this instance and a lot of times if you think you have an allergic reaction I would take that child into the doctor we want to document that reaction so you don't have a child falsely labeled as allergic to something for the rest of their lives when it may or may not be an allergic reaction. Ear infections can be viral and you can even get fluid there from accumulations that might be allergic but usually it's bacterial and when it's severe we treat. Do not feel like all ear infections need to be treated with antibiotics, they certainly don't and in fact the over treatment and the overuse of antibiotics I think has led to more harm than good in the United States for sure and probably worldwide. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to click here to see our newest episode. And as always, appreciate sharing this time with you. I'm Dr. Paul.